Hello and welcome back to the MCAT grind. We have my favorite musculoskeletal system of biology chapter 11. Now, we have the types of muscles first. We have the skeletal muscles, the smooth muscles, and the cardiac muscles. The skeletal muscle is identified by the multinuclear part of it as multiple uh, nucleus and multiple cells within that cell and you will see later the structure of the sarcomere and is controlled by somatic nerves using voluntary uh, nervous system in the somatic division and we have striated striation within the, the skeletal muscle. Smooth muscles on the other hand are single nucleated and they're involuntary which means that they're using your autom autonomic um, divisions in your peripheral nervous system and they're non-striated. Think about the muscles that control your uh, food that passes through your uh, digestive system, right? The contraction, they're propelled forward by the smooth muscles. The cardiac muscles is single nucleated, sometimes two, uh, double nucleated, and they're involuntary also, right? You don't have to think, consciously think about it, and they just activate. They're striated like skeletal muscles, so you see that there's um, parts that they share with each other, right? Both skeletal and cardiac are striated, and smooth and cardiac share like being single nucleated and involuntary. Now the structure of the sarcomere, the basic unit of the muscle. What we have here are several places. The purple or pink is denoted by the myosin. They're pretty thick, whereas the ones straight are the actins. Right, they're thin, thin ones. The myosins, they have the little hook onto them and they do the pulling. They pull the actin sides together. Right? And we have the Z, the Z line right here. You can look at it and see it looks like a Z run from one side to another. The M line is in the middle, in the midline. The H zone only contains the, the myosin fibers right in the middle. And the A band contains, uh, or the H zone is only from actin to actin. Actin N to actin N. A band contains all of it. And an I band is right in between of where there's only actin and no myosin. We also have the many... Oh, one second. We also have when multiple sarcomeres are lined together, they're called myofibro. Myofibro extends, uh, gets into more bands and bundles up together into the whole uh, bigger muscle parts. And it's covered by a thin layer of sarcoplasmic reticulum, which is a derivation of endoplastic reticulum. So it's shortened to SR. And sarcolemma is the, the, the outside membrane of it that covers it. And that receives the signal and basically passes it forward into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The pathway goes from the neuromuscular junction which is between the nerve and the muscle. And when the nerve synapse, it synapses onto the nerve terminal into the motor end plate. The motor end plate is just a specific name for the nerve terminal at the end of the neuromuscular junction at where the synapse is. And this subsequently triggers acetylcholine being released into the synapse and those bind to the sarcolemma receptor. Remember, sarcolemma is the membrane and that allows the sarcolemma receptor to pass the signal down to the T-tubule into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So think about the layering outside is the sarcolemma. You pass the signal to the sarcolemma and in between it, right, there's a little space and it's transverse down to a T-tubule. From T-tubule, transverse tubule straight down to the sarcoplasmic reticulum and the reticulum then it has a receptor binded to it and a signal and it triggers the release of calcium. The release of calcium then goes on to bind to troponin and troponin um, changes the conformation of tropomyosin 
on the actin of itself, which exposes the sites where myosin can bind to it. That's how you remember the troponin and the tropomyosin are associated with actin because it has a T in it. But the actin uh, sites available for my, uh, myosin exposure, uh, myosin attachment are exposed now. And then myosin can finally use its little hand to grab on and stroke and pull them together. So how it works is that ATP is converted into ADP and PI and the ADP and the uh, phosphate is on the little trigger itself and when it gets released both of them gets released it triggers the power stroke to reload this basically an ATP molecule comes here and basically pushes it back and let it go and on, on it ATP is hydrolyzed into ADP and PI for it to be ready and locked and loaded so ATP you can think about it's the the loading of the chamber and by actually cocking the gun it allows the uh, the part to be loaded and ready to do the next stroke. Creatine phosphate uh, can store extra phosphate ions and allow allow the conversion into ATP as needed. So creatine phosphate stores the phosphate and it can be hydrolyzed into ATP plus creatine. So you can use it uh, more into your muscle movements. However, lactic acid can build up as a result of anaerobic exercise and hence you also have your O2 debt which your body requires O2 to move out the lactic acid because it will need to be converted back to pyruvate and go through the cycle. At the end we also have the acetylcholinerase uh, to help relax right by degrading the acetylcholine in the synapse it stops the mechanism all the way down here and then we have a little bit about joints uh, in the bone itself we have the epiphysis on the very top the metaphysis in the middle and the diaphysis along the diameter of the bone inside the hard bone we have osteons which are just little holes and channels for them to uh, kind of hollow and pass through. The vertical ones are called Habersian canals, the horizontal ones are Volkmann canal. I know it's confusing, right? You typically think V and V associate together, but no, it's just switch, kind of like Greenland and Iceland. We also have the lacunae, which is in the actual structure in between. They're a little bit uh, dispersed, but just far enough apart that they uh, contribute to the structural integrity in their mature osteocyte, which is like the bone cells. For the joints, we have the synovial membrane layer, and then it moves on to the synovium, which synovium, which actually releases the lubricating uh, so new synovial fluid to help lubricate the joints, and then the articular uh, membrane actually protects the ridge, prevent um, rubbing against each other, and only touch those parts. That's pretty much it for the musculoskeletal system.